So Millie, we're, we're talking about International Women's Day. How relevant is it in the modern day? I think um, International Women's Day is really, really relevant still. It's an amazing opportunity to celebrate the successes of women across all elements of, of life. Um, and whilst we've come so far with uh, women's rights and gender equality, there's still so much more that can be done. Uh, it's an opportunity, I guess, to, to connect with other people, reflect on, on where we're at, but also there's it, it provides an influx of resources and events for schools and young women and people that need inspiring to really access uh, those role models, the things they need to motivate them and, and understand that they have um, the potential to do so much in, in the world. I think it's still really important, um, specifically in an industry like football where it's still so male dominated and male heavy. Um, and it's brilliant that we get a chance to sort of really celebrate and highlight um, you know, strong females in every walk of life, not just football. Um, but yeah, it's still really important in the modern day. It's always an opportunity to, to just celebrate and I think it brings together uh, people from all different uh, cultures and walks of life to, to just highlight how great women are. <laughs> You said the key word there, inspiring. The, the, the theme this year is around inspiring inclusion. Just talk us through some of your role models and, and who inspired you. I think I'm really lucky as a coach right now to have some amazing female coach role models in Casey Stoney, Emma Hayes, Serena Viedman, all achieving amazing successes over the recent seasons with their respective teams. I think I've been really lucky in the sense that from the beginning of my coaching journey when I was sort of 13, 14, um, I was always surrounded by really positive, strong female role models. Um, growing up, playing football um, for Essex County Player Development Centre and the County School Squad, I always had female coaches around me. Um, and you know, one of them is now our chairwoman in Danielle Warns, who was always a brilliant coach that I supported when I was younger. Um, and people like Emma Burden, who I've mentioned before, but really got me into coaching. And I think without those really positive, strong female role models, you know, I might not have carried on that coaching journey and you know, still be doing it as a full-time career now. So yeah, I've been really grateful to have really positive people around me. From a personal perspective, I've always been a real fan of people that drive opportunities for others, maybe more in the background. Um, not so much in the background for this individual, but Baroness Sue Campbell is a big sort of role model for myself. Um, she had a fantastic career. She's inspired so many people, working from a PE teacher and a netball player up to director of football, women's football at the FA. Um, and I've had the pleasure of listening to her as a keynote speaker on a few times. And the way she talks just makes you want to be a better person and do more for the, the community that you serve. Um, as well as, I think, other role models I like to see are, I guess, more local level role models. The, the volunteers that give up their time, parents to just deliver opportunities that maybe weren't there for, for young females across the area and the communities that they, they live in. Well, outside of football, my mum's a massive inspiration to me. Obviously, taking me to, to football games or training. Uh, I don't live that close, so it's quite a trek to train him. But uh, yeah, she's been great for the whole way through. Kind of my little mentor in the car before and after games. I think my mum and my dad, because they both encourage me to start and they take me to training and matches every week and they just keep me going rather than thinking it's a hard job or they just keep going and encouraging me. So that's my inspiration. Do, do you yourself perhaps feel like a bit of a role model for, for some of the younger younger girls trying to get into the game? Um, I hope so. I think that's a really nice thought. Um, I'd like to think that I could be a role model to some of those younger players coming through. Um, I know that I've got a really good relationship with a lot of the girls I coach. Um, I'm involved with all the age groups from 10s up to 16s, including the college girls, um, 16s to 19s as well. Um, and yeah, I think I pride myself on the relationship I build with every single player I coach. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice thought of myself being a role model to them. Um, in terms of working within the team. I'm really lucky that we have such amazing players to work with. They, they make the job easy in so many ways. They've, they've come together overnight the last nine months and been very successful um, as a group of players. However, 
they also sort of inspire me. Um, it goes both ways. They're, they're my role models too. They're the ones that are there listening, challenging me to be better and to develop as a coach to ensure that they have the, the development opportunities. It's been a really good first season for you as part of the women's team. Uh, champions elect through to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. Um, what, what's it been like playing for the team? It's been so exciting. I think that most people will agree that we didn't sort of expect um, this sort of road through the league that we've had, but the team gelled so much quicker than expected, which is always a positive. Um, we're so lucky that we've got a real good culture around the team. It's a really positive environment um, and everybody's looking for the same goal um, to sort of progress through the leagues and, you know, everything seems to be really falling into place. Um, Especially when we're you know, flying through the, the cup as well, you know, we've faced some really challenging opponents, um, a lot of Prem Division teams that have given us good games, uh, made us work really, really hard, but to come out of those games on top, it's a really positive and good feeling. Um, so yeah, everything seems to be falling into place and everyone's working really hard. The step up from girls to women is really exciting and like the new challenges, the new people you play with, it's really exciting, yeah. We've made like a massive improvement from the start. Uh, we've all bonded together as a team really well um, and yeah, the season's gone really well. I couldn't have really asked for more in the first season with the team or as a team at all. They have been really successful um, and, and to kind of see the joy and the successes come um, is a really proud moment to be, to be a part of something bigger. You see more and more sort of spectators coming down to watch, local girls teams getting behind the, the team and supporting people interested in engaging with the, the team through school visits and other opportunities and it really shows the power that such a big club and, and, and women's football can have when they work together. It's really special to play for such a big well-known club. Obviously you've been playing for the club and the community foundation for quite a while now. Um, got scouted when I was 12 at a school tournament and that was like amazing news for me to be like yeah, kind of scouted for this big, well-known club and, uh, and seeing how it's grown since has been amazing. Women's football in general is probably in the best position it's, it's ever been, um, but there is still so much more that can be done to help it. Yeah, definitely. I think that it's on the up and it's, you know, the, the progression that it's had over the past sort of five years has been absolutely huge. Um, we've spoken before about the fact that the Euros was definitely a catalyst to that sort of progression and the upward trajectory of that. Um, and it, you know, really set it going forward in England especially. Um, but even since, you know, sort of one of my highlights of women's football was the uh, World Cup in Canada back in 2015. And when you look how different it is from then to now, the difference is huge. Um, it's almost quite impossible to believe. Um, uh, even things like a few of our under 10s have the um, new sticker books, the Panini sticker books for the WSL. And we sort of exchange swapsies before training starts on a Monday and different things like that, which is nice. But I think there is still a lot of work to go, um, but it's definitely on the right track. The growth that we've seen over the last, last few years really is a testament to the volunteers and the people within the game already. But it shows how far you can come in such a short period of time. And that growth has to be then backed up by long-term and sustainable change to ensure that progression continues and you don't get a huge gap between the best and the rest almost. And it'd be amazing to see a lot more clubs with women's teams building on those, those previous growth and successes to develop pathways where opportunities to perform at higher levels are more readily available and that only comes from backing and support. Um, so having a women's team at Colchester United for the first time in a while is a huge step on that way. Um, but there's always more that can be done. It never, it never will stop.